Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the Dinosaur True King deck again, specifically trying to resolve the Dragoon Knight Trident combo where you summon your Lithosagum, you banish three cards out of your opponent's extra deck, and then you make your Ultimaya Zulkin off your Denglong play, and then you make a Dragoon Knight Trident happen out of nowhere, out of thin air. You send three cards to the grave, takes three more cards out of your opponent's extra deck, yielding them with six cards taken out of their extra deck, basically meaning their main engine of extra deck summon like mechanic whatever is gone and then you end uh, with a nine pillars and a Lagia in uh, in the optimum situation and setting but obviously this requires you to have to go first in order for this to be usable now there's not a lot of like main deck space that's been taken up by this combo uh, but it is still like two to three cards that you have to run you definitely have to run the nine pillars and you have to run the floater otherwise you're just not getting value off the ding long and it's one less negation um, now I'm running two Yang Zings here because the Chi Win is a floater you can go into off of your Swanee. Your Swanee is a beater that you can summon off your Deng Long, meaning your OTK reaches a bit farther. Uh, but also it can be destroyed off of your Nine Pillars and summon a Tuner, uh, float into a Tuner, which you could then utilize on your next turn potentially, um, into anything else like a Cloud Castle or a Trishula or something like that. Um, there's, there's a couple different options that you have available to you as far as what you could go into. Uh, now the problem I have with this deck is that you have these bricky cards in it when you're going second. So this is definitely a deck that uh, that you really want to go first with. This is actually probably um, something that could have some uh, some merit in the future since you do typically play Ding Long in the regular True King deck, uh, so that you can send one of your guys, get a free nine, and then make a, make a standard turn one board of like VFD plus Lagia or VFD plus Bahamut Shark. Um, with a toad, like there's a there's a few different standard openings that are really easy to achieve like that, and these three cards could very easily be something that you side for when you know you're going first, so that you could do that play going first 100% of the time, but then just not have them diluting your deck uh, during uh, die roll games where you don't know if you're going first or second. Uh, so stuff like that, that's is definitely a possibility that you could have going for you, but this combo is very fragile to going second because you're going to have these cards in your deck that you can potentially draw. And that is a uh, that is an issue, uh, to say the very least, because you definitely don't want to be drawing like nine pillars uh, and having like lessened combo reach. Same thing with these, although these can like combo with your true kings to a little bit um, of like potential and degree, uh, but it's still not the ideal best of what you could have. Uh, still, there's just there's a lot of different like things, variance factors that go into this as far as like a combo that it allows you to have. Uh, but it is still a possibility for you to side those cards, like I said, because you could just literally play the extra deck the way it is, because the extra deck is not tight at all. You have so much free space in this extra deck to do pretty much whatever you want, um, and then you could just side these three cards as far as like Swanee, Chi Win, and the Nine Pillars, and then just put them in every game that you know you're going first, i.e. the games that you lost in your siding for the next game, where you get to choose whether you get to go first or second. So there's those as possibilities, but regardless of that, let's stop rambling on about this nonsense, and let's just jump straight into the game and hope for God, hope to God that we get to go first and do this, because that's the entire reason I'm doing these videos, is trying to showcase this combo, because, I mean, that's, that's kind of the point of the build, right? But anyway, enough... Uh, circumstantial rambling. Let's just jump straight into the game, shall we? All right, so let's try this again. And I, for God, no, this is just evidence as to why I don't want to actually play this deck. Uh, unless he lets me go first. No, nope, no such luck. Is that I don't want to play this deck, um, like with these cards in it, because it just sucks going second. Um, I drew this, which is kind of irritating. Oh, he's playing Aromas, Aromage. All right. This is another deck that I wanted to take a look at because it did get like support in Invasion, uh, Invasion Vengeance, um, and uh, so like uh, it does allow you to uh, like synchro summon and stuff with the deck. So they got like a pretty decent themed tuner, if I remember correctly, and like a pretty decent themed synchro. So like there's there's a couple different things, but just set one and pass. Um, I'm almost assuming this to be something like Dried Winds or something like that. In which case, I get to do my combo if it all resolves. But that's if it resolves. <laughs> uh, but so, we're going to throw this out there and see if it uh, sticks. If this is something like a Fiendish Chain or Breakthrough Skill or anything like that. Okay, Humid Winds. Um, pay a 1,000, add an Aroma. Um, if your life point is lower than your opponent's, you can gain 500. Okay, so this does nothing to the overall game plan of, uh, of how I'm going to be interacting with his field. Uh, so that's perfectly fine. So what I'm going to end up doing is, okay, he's adding Angelica. That's that themed tuner, right? Uh, I need to read this card because I haven't read this card since I did like a review on it. Uh, so we'll go for this. Let's see. I want to read this card, please. 
During either player's turn, you can discard this card and then target one aroma monster in your graveyard, gain life points equal to its attack. Uh, you while this uh, while your life points is higher than your opponent's, you control an aroma monster card in your graveyard and special summon it. Okay. So if it's in your graveyard, you can special summon it. That's right. It has two effects that completely fuel itself. I remember that now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to terraform it. I'm going to get the Fire uh, True King, specifically. Because what I'll be able to do with that is that I'll be able to summon the uh, Lithosagum. And then I'll be able to summon uh, the Fire True King and pop the um, Miscellaneous Source and the Earth... Or not the Earth, the Water True King out of my hand. So it's going to be perfectly fine there. Uh, so Humid Winds, he gained a... He gained some life, he drew a card. I feel so bad because, like, Aromas is a deck that I really enjoy, um, like, as far as, like, card design. Uh, and I had a friend that, uh, that played it when it came out, and it was, like, really cool to watch it operate. But unfortunately, I just don't know how it could fare other than just being, like, just a worse stun option than the other decks in the format, which is unfortunate. But, so what you're going to see me doing here is I'm going to be doing the, uh, the take six cards out of your extra deck combo. Um, with the Druni Knight Trident and the, uh, and the stuff. Now I'm gonna search a Yang Zing, um, that's... No, I'm not even gonna search a Yang Zing. The Ding Long is just not gonna be a plus one. So that's gonna be unfortunate. Uh, Petiridon here will be summoned. Uh, so I can pop both of those with, uh, with the Earth, True Kong, um, and then that will allow them to be summoned. Uh, it'll allow this to be summoned. I'll be able to banish three cards out of his extra deck. They have to be different names. Uh, so there is that. As, a, as an issue. Okay, he's playing Invoked in here as well. Either that or these are just taking up space. What is this? Sea Monster of the Seas. Man, Konami tried so hard to make us think that card was going to be good. Um, I'm going to banish his Zulkin. I'm going to banish his Aromage. And then I'm banishing the Aromage specifically because I'm going to be able to send cards to his graveyard anyway. Um, and I'm going to banish the, uh, the Bahama Shark so that the Toad is just left in his extra deck uh, without being able to be used. Uh, so, Petirodon, Baby Sarasaurus. Baby Sarasaurus is triggering first. Uh, so, Drek Aeolo will uh, be summoned here. Baby Sarasaurus is going to summon... I don't really think it actually matters. I guess you just summon the Miscellaneousaurus. Um, I don't think it actually matters for the purpose of the combo uh, that you do. All I know is that you do Synchro away with it here. So, I will make a Denglong uh, right here and now with these. Uh, I'm not going to search off the Dinglong because I've already got the uh, the nine branches, the nine pillars in my hand, and I'd like to maintain two floaters in my deck because I'm going to summon one off of this. Uh, so there's that, which is fine. Uh, but so I'll be able to use this. I'll send another one of the uh, the True Kings to the grave to make it nine, and then I'll be able to make my Ultimaya, which I'll be able to actually keep on the board. Um, there's actually like the potential for me to keep it on the board here. And uh, I'll be able to summon like Crystal Wing, potentially. But I'm just gonna go for Trident here. Uh, I'm just gonna send more cards out of his uh, out of his grave, out of his extra deck to the grave. Um, now the reason I banished his uh, his uh, Synchro, his Rosemary, was because he's got Angelica, which he could discard to gain uh, Rosemary's attack. I haven't even looked if Ro Rosemary has attack. I mean, I didn't I didn't check these things uh, prior, but it's still something that is uh, potentially possible. But so we'll summon the Trident here. Uh, so Trident is usable, uh, and now I can actually send, um, I can send more cards. I can send these three, but I want to keep the Zulkin, uh, at least to a certain degree I want to keep the Zulkin, but I don't think I actually need it. Um, I can make a Lagio with this and the Miscellaneousaurus, so there's that. Um, so I'm get, definitely getting rid of the Field Spell. 100% uh, getting rid of the Field Spell, getting rid of the Trident. And uh, I'll just get rid of the Zulkin. It's it's not that big of an issue. Um, not that big of an issue at all. I could just deal with that in a different way. But so I'll get rid of his Norden. Well, I'm gonna have to okay uh, to verify first. Get rid of the Norden. Get rid of the Black Rose because then that means there's no way for him to make Crystal Wing um, outside of the Ultimate that's already banished. So there's that. And what is the best one to send here? Uh, the best one to send here is probably the uh, Merkaba, just because I don't want him to have that as an accessibility option. Uh, so then we'll do this. I'll go for four. Uh, so I'll banish one, two, three. I'll banish these, and that will summon. I can summon Tyranno Infinity from my uh, from my deck, and that's actually an option for like a game shot here. Uh, so we'll go with that because it'll be destroyed by those overlay with it. It's not that big of an issue. Uh, but so what we'll do here is we'll do this. Now I can pop the Miscellaneousaurus. 
or I could pop this uh, this Swanee and get a tuner, um, which would allow me to go into Cloud Castle, which would allow me to bring back more stuff. Uh, but I'm just gonna pop the miscellaneous source. It doesn't actually uh, really matter. This is just a little bit better off as far as the uh, the options. Now, I'm gonna make VFD with these just because it's more attack that is in defense mode, so it doesn't really affect the entire game plan anyway. So this is like. Um, you gain a thousand when it's destroyed by battle or card effect. Uh, so I'll just attack. That's 13. There's that. And he gains a thousand back. And now I'll just be able to do this. And with this 4K Tyranno Infinity, it should be a pretty clean, like, game shot. That's the that's the thought, at least, right? Um, so at least I did get to do, like, the combo. I mean, I definitely had better plays, but I wanted to show, like, the combo specifically. Um, even though I didn't get to do it going first. Uh, so there's that. Now, Tyranno Infinity is just a just a beast of a card. When you're able to summon it off Miscellaneous Source like that and just generate 4,000 damage just randomly, like, just being able to do that is absolutely insane and not really something that I would consider, uh, like, fair, I guess, considering that you literally combo up into your stuff and then you Miscellaneous Source and summon something like this. Like, that just seems a bit excessive. Um, Tyranno Infinity has never been a problem in the past because it's never been supportable by banished dinosaurs being uh, being good. But uh, as it stands now, like you're just able to do that. You're just able to summon it for free, and it's like, oh well, it doesn't matter if like I was close to game or not. Um, I can just summon Tyranno Infinity, and it's going to be at least 4K off of Miscellaneous Source. And uh, and then there's just that that you're going to have to be dealing with now. And then if by some reason I still don't kill you, it's a level 4 to go into my Lagia or Dulka or whatever. So that's just a little bit of a problem I have with the situation. <laughs> because of the fact that it's just a free 4K plus beater that just pops out of nowhere. But I also think it's a cool interaction that Konami literally designed the, uh, the new dinosaur stuff to work with the old stuff. But... Over well, overall, anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month, so definitely be sure to check out the details of that over on Patreon. I give away a sizable amount of Konami product or just whatever a good high dollar card of the format is if there's no actual good Konami release that has been happening in that past month's time frame. Whatever the flavor of the month is, essentially. But if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting this channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've dealt with thus far. But definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that is it for this video. Again, guys, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual, take care. I will see you in the next video.